Hey everybody, it's your girl Charlotte Van Horn, and I am here today on behalf of Black Expats in Panama. Like I always say, I'm every woman, so I could be talking to you from Sisters Talking Natural Hair and Business Podcast, Locks Forever, and a bunch of other stuff that I do. But I'm so excited to be here today on behalf of Black Expats in Panama's Facebook group because I'm here and I want to introduce to you Miss Melva Lo de Gooden. And Melva is the president of SAMAP. And you know, if you are a member on the Facebook group, Black Expats in, in Panama, I post about them sometimes. And I just wanted Melva to come on and talk to us about um, SAMAP, the Associated Museum, and um, just tell us what we can look for and expect when we come to Panama to visit and live. Hey, Miss Melva, how you doing? doing? I am doing just fine, Charlotte, and I'm just so proud of you, the work you're doing, you. because it's reinforcing what we're seeing in our museum. This morning, up to about two o'clock today, I was down there at the museum, and there was a Black group visiting. Uh, one was originally from Panama, one was from Africa. The other one was from a, an African-American. Uh -huh. And so, you know, uh, we are seeing these groups of uh, Black people from the diaspora coming. Yeah. At the very beginning, we used to see them come along with mostly white groups, and you'll see a smattering of just Black folk. But now we're seeing entirely Black folk coming to visit us at Samar. And this work that you're doing is, is, is just um, helping in that direction. It's going in that direction because there is a wealth of opportunities out there. And there is, a, there is a, such a passionate interest out there. Yeah. I tell you, I spent... Uh, I spent uh, about, it was the, 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 the visit was to last one hour and it lasted two hours. Wow. And when we were finished, uh, the girls ended up in tears and they said, oh, so sorry for that. But they were so emotional yes. at the yes. connection yes. that they were making. I mean, I, it, it, they, they were just dis discovering so much. Yeah. So I just wanted to start with that experience to tell you how important the work that you're doing is you. now. Thank and it's, it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue to grow because our people, we are doing better. We can travel. We have the, 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 the extra funds that permit us to travel and get to right. know each other. That's right. And it, it, it's, it's, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. I tell you, it was exciting attending to this group today. Well, you know, it's funny that you should say that because remember when we first bought our first group to SMAP, um, to uh -huh. the museum, um, it was the Sister Locked in Panama group in January of 2020. And those sisters are so glad that we got to travel before, before the pandemic. Exactly. Yes. And we are so tight. We bonded so tightly over that group. Some of the group that's coming back to um, in Panama in, with us in May are some of those women again. But oh. when I tell you that when we brought those women there, we had 40 African-American sisters with us, right? Uh -huh. Some of them never even realized that they had West Indian backgrounds until yeah. they were going through the museum. And, you know, some of them was just saying, well, you know, mama's house used to look like this, you know, right. and they started exactly. to connect. And it was the same thing. It was very emotional for them. It almost felt like how some people say they feel when they go to Africa, you know? Yeah. So yeah. tell us, mm -hmm. 
tell us about, tell us who you are, and then tell us how the museum um, got started and tell us about SAMAP. Okay, um, as Charlotte says, my name is Melva Lowe Ruby, and I am the current president of the Society of Friends of the West Indian Museum of Panama. This is an organization, a non-profit non, non organization that started approximately 40 years ago. As a matter of fact, in March of 19, of 2021, we'll celebrate our 40th anniversary wow. because the museum was inaugurated in December of 1980. Mm -hmm. And about three months after it was inaugurated, those of us who were close to the project saw that this institution is not going to survive. And we, from the community, we can't permit it to die. That's right. Because there are no other monuments. There are no other recognized tributes to Black people anywhere in Panama. Those who have visited Panama, you see the statue of Vasco Nunez de Balboa on the Cinta Costera. Mm -hmm. so if you visit the Panama, it is, it is a beautiful work of art, yeah. but I'm not sure if, you know, five, 600 years after the Spanish came and sacked our country, you know, we should still have these monuments. Mm -hmm. So We're going these, through the same thing in the United States. Precisely, yes. and, I, and in Great Britain too. Yes, yes. And, yes. and you know, Balboa has our our money. It's called Balboas. You know, we have the statue. One of the main arteries of the city is called the Balboa Avenue. Yes. We have a city called Balboa, and there are Balboas in, in different provinces too. You know, the man is all over the place. He and Christopher Columbus, Colon, was named after Christopher Columbus. So, you know, it's, it's 600 years. Thing. I thank you for sharing that right there because you just taught me something. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christopher Columbus, Colon, Cristobal Colon in Spanish. Wow, okay. And you see, uh, uh, so we have all these cities. It's as if, we don't have, it's time we sort of wake up and recognize the heroes, our own heroes. Yes. You know, and, and I think we're going to be moving in that direction uh, in, in year 2021, November 28th, we'll be celebrating 200 years of having declared our independence from Spain. Wow. So there are rumblings and, and particularly rumblings from the black community that are that are talking about many of the things that you that we are just talking about that is uh, that there is a poster there has to be a symbol of the celebration mm -hmm. and the black community has already come up with one it says afros visibles that is visibilize make make afros visible for the 200 year celebration. Wow. So and and there that's is December 28th? That, that in 2021. Okay. But this next in month, month in November, they're going to select the poster. I am sure they won't be selecting that one, but I'm, I'm proud of the people who put it together because it means we're waking up and we're saying, Okay, it's about time we start talking yeah. about our history. And yeah. so when we, th those of us who came together in the year 1981, March of 1981, to form the organization that we now know now as SAMAP. Mm -hmm. So it's because of its uh, Spanish acronym, Sociedad de Amigos del Museo Afroantiano de Panama. That's the complete name but we shortened it to its acronym, which is SAMAP. Okay. And we came together because we saw that the government, okay, there were a lot of rumblings about 
Blacks not getting recognition. So they say, okay, here, take this church, we'll renovate it into a museum. But then they didn't put enough resources to yes. keep it going. Just the director and the secretary to run it. And it, it, so it was going to not going to uh, exist for very long. And that's when we it came like together. Set up to fail. I'm sorry. It was like set yeah. up to fail. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but you know, and the person who was behind it, which is who is Reina Torres de Arauz, he is a very well recognized, respected anthropologist, and she is responsible for founding most of the government museums that exist in Panama. But just a few, a couple of years after she founded our museum, she got very sick from cancer and she passed away. Oh. So it was, it was, uh, the burden was on us yes. to keep her project going. Yes. And um, I'm just so proud of the people we have had in Samap in these 40 years, how diligently we have worked. It's never always been easy. Mm -hmm. You know what it's like to work yeah. in a group. You know, we, sometimes we disagree, sometimes we fight, yeah. but we have kept going for 40 years and we have helped to make it uh, an institution in Panama. It's one of the most um, active and vibrant museums of the, the 19 government museums. You know, they're, they're the, the government has about 19 museums all through the country, mm -hmm. but at least um, about five or six of them are closed and have been closed for years. Okay. The largest museum, which is named after Reina Torres de Arauz, the founder of all these museums, that's been closed since the year 2013. Wow. And it's just a few days ago that they, they, the, the, there is a group that took charge of it and will now carry out the renovations. They got a concession of $14 million, wow. you know, money that I don't think they, they've in the, in the almost 40 years we've had some up. I don't know that they've spent that much in us, but well, wow. I, think, I think that museum uh, deserves it because it's a huge structure. It was the former railroad. And so, Hopefully that will be undertaken. It'll take two years, I understand, to renovate it. But um, this, this, that's how slowly things work. So we didn't want our museum to fall into that trap and get closed and, right. and then not be able to open. So our, our group has kept it going. And in the process, we have learned, we've learned so many things staying together. We've learned about museums. We've made international connections. We are now a member of the Organization of Negros Centro Americanos. We're participating actively there. We are participating actively in the Caribbean Museums Organization. Yay. So we are, we are really doing many things. So the community, it's a learning came, experience. the community came together to save it and to keep right. it going. And to so keep it going. Now, if you just but you you just underwent um, some restorations of the uh, museum as well, right? Right. We the the government um, because during its initial say 30, 20, 30 years or so, most of the renovations or the, 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 the changes of exhibits and all of that, we have done it. Right. Uh, none of us in Samap has a degree in museums, a uh, specialty in museums. Uh, you know, I have been exposed to different seminars and so, so I've picked up a lot of stuff along the way, but uh, we none, we didn't have a specialist among our group. So we just did 
things by trial and error, but you see, we had the, 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 the history and the culture that was second nature to us. So we could tell, okay, that is that big, that's a picture of so-and-so and, -so and that, that's how my grandmother uh, cooked her, put the pots there and the refrigerator here and the washing. So we, we knew the stuff. It's just that we didn't have the formal museum training, but we picked up a lot along the way. That is amazing because I can't wait for um, some of the, the Black expats that are in this group to see this museum because, you know, you're saying that right now, you would never think that. The museum is so beautifully done. It is so beautifully done. The information is laid out so um, professionally and it is, it just makes you feel like you're really there. You know, you got some really nice artifacts. So people just chipped in from their grandmoms and their, their family. Exactly. Wow. And, and when, when we first, when we first started Charlotte, this was back in, in the 80s and the 90s. Our communities weren't accustomed to, to donating things to the museum or even to know much about the work of museums. But little by little, we, we contributed to the education of the community and we invited them there and then there'd be visits from their relatives from overseas that bring them by and the, the, the relatives from overseas may have had more exposure to museums. So they have to create the enthusiasm. So then people started, really started donating. And um, now we, we're going to have to uh, probably build an additional facility. You know what else we've, we've done to that I'm really uh, proud about is that we, we have nurtured many PhD candidates wow. we, that, who have come down from, from universities, mostly in the United States, I'd say, but of late, we have gotten a couple from universities in Germany wow. and from universities in the United Kingdom. And uh, so they have come and they have taken advantage of the, the, the reading materials that we also have because we have a small library there and they can, um, uh, they can you know, consult our libraries. So we haven't kept account <laughs> of how many uh, of, of the, uh, the persons, student scholars, have come down, have been PhD candidates and gotten, but we are quite proud. We've had um, Fulbright grantees. Right now we have one hoping to get a Fulbright to come down next year because we 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 can write letters of support once they're, they, they, they apply. So um, we have we have had we have had quite a number who've come and they have really contributed to enhancing the work that we're doing. So let me ask you this. So um, somebody bought that church for it to be restored. And I am, at, at the end of this video, I'm going to have some pictures. I'm sorry, at the end of this interview, I'm going to have some pictures at the end. Um, uh -huh. So was that church significant in any way with regard to West Indian life and culture, or was that just an available um, edifice? No, that was a very significant church. As a matter of fact, um, we talked about it, and I, I told the folks today at the museum, I said, you know, the church itself is part of our exhibit because there are no longer wooden structures in that area. You visited a lot, you see. All the buildings uh, that uh, architectural design has been pulled down. Now we have concrete structures. So that is the only building in that area now that had that 
made of wood mm -hmm. and also has that architectural design. Yeah. When I visited Barbados in 2018, I attended a museums conference there and we went on a tour of the island. I said, wow, now I can see how, uh, how the builders of our museum came up with that design because it was so familiar mm -hmm. in Barbados, especially when you rode out to the country parts. The, the church actually was built in 1910, and um, between 1909 and 1910, and it was the, the group that, because the Barbadians were the largest uh, group that the United States recruited to work on the canal. Uh -huh. You know, I think about 60,000 Barbadians left the Barbados to come to Panama. You know, maybe yeah. about 20,000 went back, yeah. but at least 60,000, uh, at least 40,000 would stay permanently in Panama. Yeah, so my, my, uh, my father-in-law is, uh, people is from Barbados. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Canal. And, um, but prior to that big contingent from Barbados, we had about between three and 5,000 workers that were, were um, recruited from Jamaica for the building of the railroad, the Transistmian Railroad that ran between the Pacific and the Atlantic. And that was in about 1850. And there were that there was Jamaicans mostly that they recruited for that job, the American com Railroad Company. Uh, and so this is why maybe they don't do it as much now, but this is why when we first started working with the museum, they called everybody Jamaicanos. <laughs> They call all of us who were of Caribbean ancestry Jamaicanos. Uh -huh. you know? Of course, you know, there is always that constant rivalry between the Jamaicans and the Barbadians. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and um, well, so. I was talking about that when I interviewed her as well. Are you, oh, do you have a Jamaican background? Yeah, my ancestry is Jamaican, uh, both on my father's side and on my mother's side. Okay. You know, my, 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 both my, my four grandparents were originally from Jamaica. Wow. And my father, I, I know about this conflict. Maybe the younger people won't know about it because my father always commented to my mother, oh my goodness, um, it's a good thing that my, my parents were from Jamaica because as soon as you took me home to introduce me to the folks, the first question that came out of their mouth was, and where are your people from? <laughs> he, said, he said that if he, if he had said that they were from Barbados, they might not have approved. <laughs> you know, there's, there's talk of the family feuds between my, um, my, my, my mother-in-law's uh, family is Jamaican. My father-in-law. Uh -huh family is Barbados. So that uh -huh. so we know all about we know all about, about those family so with the church when the church was so when the church was active did West Indians attend that church? Yes. Um yeah I started out by saying the church was built in about 1909 to okay. 1910. Okay. Uh -huh. And it was built by these um Barbadian workers who were you know, the, 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 because there were about 20,000 that were officially recruited to build the American Canal in 19, between, say, 1905 and 1910, or, you know. So when they came, they would meet for religious uh, services in the homes, but then afterwards the movement grew. And so on their free time on weekends, they built that church. And it was not only a church, it was like a community center. Mm -hmm. During the week, they, they had classes there. 
uh, they taught the children, the offspring of the workers, and they, the women met with their sewing groups or their singing groups or whatever. So it was a, it was a cultural center. And in that area, we had a big building, Muller's building. I don't know if you heard, maybe you may not have heard of Muller's building, but I'm sure Charlotte, your husband knows it was an iconic structure. It's, it was like a boat. It's a three-story building and it's right at the corner of the museum. And so a lot of the West Indian workers who, who were recruited to work on the canal, they lived on that building. And on the ground floor of that building, um, many West Indian entrepreneurs had businesses there, you know, whether it was um, pharmacies or retail businesses, so, but, but many uh, businessmen from the Caribbean had their own businesses there. You know, um, Alfredo and I, we have absolutely partnered with um, ITA Global to continue mm -hmm. to bring um, to, to continue to bring black groups to Panama. And uh -huh. uh, when I first um, started working with um, Chris DePew and I told him, I said, have you ever heard of CIMAP? Have you ever heard of the West mm -hmm. Indian Museum? And you know, Chris is a white guy. And he was mm -hmm. like, no, he hadn't. And I said, well, it's required that our tour includes that. And so mm -hmm. from that day forward, and any time we bring a group to Panama, we will be coming to the mm -hmm. museum before we do anything else. And I thought as far as before we go to the commercialized Panama Canal, I thought it was important <laughs> that we get to connect and understand the life of the West Indians that were here and built that canal, okay? Exactly. And, and also, you know, when I, um, and, uh, when I, when, when we went to the museum and when I, when I uh, communicate with you and Carmela and other, um, you know, people with West Indian backgrounds in, in Panama, it's just amazing how our histories overlap. Exactly. And, and how much we have in common. And I think the amazing thing is that people don't think of that when they think of Panama. So when you come to Panama, uh, you see, you know, our brothers and sisters are here. Uh, you know, it is mm -hmm. just, it is just such a, and I, I, I got emotional when I was talking to Orena because it is such a warm embrace. You know, it is so nice just to be able to celebrate you and your ancestors and the things that you've done. And we know, um, I think our latest thing in, um, in the U.S. is that museum. And if you get over here and, you, and you're in D.C., please go see the African-American. Um, oh, definitely. Oh, my goodness. It is you know, so um, powerful. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Charlotte, this year I celebrated my 75th birthday. Wow. And I bought myself a ticket to go to... Uh, Washington, Baltimore, air, uh, to to see that museum, and then the pan and, and you know there were rumblings about the pandemic when I said, well, I'm going anyway. Yeah. But then yes. that was my, my ticket was for around the first week of April, and by then the the reality of the pandemic had set in. So I just said no. I, I can't make it. Not this time. Not with what's going on. But I still have that pending. Yes. And 2021 or the latest 2022, yes. I'll be going to, to visit whenever the pandemic al allows me to because That's I read the entire biography of uh, the, the founding director of the yes. museum. Yes. I, uh, my, my niece gave, the, gave me the book as a gift. Wow. And I got so enthused because yes. he was going through things on a macro scale that we went through on a micro scale, you know what I'm saying? Was that quite an undertaking for him? Yes. It was. You know, um, and uh, so I could, I could empathize, I could understand all that yes. he was going through, and I am just so anxious to see the final yes. project. 
It is amazing. And you will, and it, it's, it's really amazing. And with you and your, in your museum, um, you know, the, the work that you do in your museum, you'll be, you will be so encouraged um, by it. And so you definitely want to, um, to do that. So let me, so actually the museum is not officially open yet. No, it's not officially opened. And for us to have had that visitor today Took to the of museum, we had, oh, we had to go to business. the mayor's office yeah. and have the mayor intervene. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got the museum open. But I'm glad that we were able because they were just so touched. And as you yeah. say, they got so emotional. They were in tears at the end of what we, you know, we spent, we, we were supposed, they told us, you can only be there for one hour. Well, they were there for two hours. We were there for two hours. We and were there longer too. Yes, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, it's it's a necessity, and it's a growing it's a growing um, attraction entity oh. and the entity. And so um, we have as a community, we have to continue to grow and develop okay. with it. Absolutely. And, and as a matter of fact, I think Al and I are due to renew our uh, membership, but I'm going to write that down because uh -huh. the pandemic has us so off, you know, right. we're wanting to get more involved and, um, and do a lot more, but I've not been back to Panama since March. I'm in the States. Wow. <laughs> I, have not seen, I have not seen my husband since March 9th. Oh, he's here. He is, he is there. He's there and I'm here. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I cannot, I, right now I'm scheduled to arrive in Panama on January 1st. And I figured uh -huh. by then we'll have all the traveling stuff worked out and um, hopefully it'll just be a good time for us to hit the ground running again and get back uh -huh. into that groove, you know, so. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. So, so uh, I, that, that's, mm -hmm. no, that's happened. We we had some of our members stuck, stuck in the States and I had to say stuck in the States because, you know, one lady who, who wanted to come back and she went up there in, in March and she wasn't able to come back until after August or September. And her mother, who is 100 years old, was down here alone. Yes. <laughs> you know, so she was she was really worried about her mother. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's but, but, a, a very unique time that exactly. I've never mm -hmm. seen again in our lives. I tell you. Um, I want to get to the other end of it and just say we survived. I thank God. We survived. That, you know, That's right. We're here talking. And in the U.S., it's really bad. And um, I know there are some of my, uh, you know, Panamanian um, friends and, and expats that were actually very glad that they were stuck in Panama as opposed to the U.S. It yeah, exactly. A lot of them, yeah. they had an opportunity. I'm just saying, they had an opportunity <laughs> to come back to the United States. Uh -huh. so like, well, you know what? I'm going to just wait it out here. You know, <laughs> they did not come back. <laughs> exactly. Because, it, it was, it was a know, blessing it, for us um, because Al was where he needed to be because he needs to be near his parents. Uh -huh. Okay. So he was over and he was, we don't call it stuck. He was, he was in Panama during this time. And, and that is where he really needed to be. But I yeah. have quite a bit of things still that I do in my life in the United States. And we uh -huh. to be able, so I was able to hold it down here and he was uh -huh. able to hold it down there. It's so good. I'm looking good. forward to getting together. To again. reuniting. Uh, we will yeah. we'll be bringing, um, uh, nobody knows this yet, but uh, we'll be bringing one group in the beginning of May 2021. Uh -huh. um, we wanted to be there during Etnia Negra. Uh -huh. And then we are actually, because of overwhelming demand, uh, we are actually going to add another trip um, uh -huh. in, in, um, to, to go to Panama. And, um, and, and hopefully it will be still during the month of Etnia Negra. 
Is oh, there but. anything special that SMAP is doing um, or has planned for 2021 at Nia Negra? Well, you know, we have, um, we, we have not in the past been set, set up a specific activity for the Etnia Negra because during that month, there are numerous black organizations that have activities. Our big activity is the Feria. And uh, that um, is usually between Mar February and March. Is the one well, at Lapa? Be yeah, the one at, at Lapa. That's okay. our biggest activity okay. for the year. And um, so we have that activity be between February and March every year. And then we have uh, in August, about the, the 15th of August, we have the celebration of the canal anniversary, which right. is the pilgrimage, the, the one. right? I'm, I'm sorry? The pilgrimage? Yeah, where we have the pilgrimage and okay. so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we've had to cancel the feria because the feria takes a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. And uh, from our viewpoint, our vantage point here, I don't think the pandemic was going to sort of yeah. lift up enough for the first two weeks of February for us to, we don't want to have a super spreader event like your president. <laughs> never, never. We, we don't want to do that. Yeah, we, um, we don't want to do that. We, were we, don't, we, want, we want to have, we know whenever we get back to having a feria, we want the pandemic to be zero, under you know, just, under, under total control, yes. you know, even though they say, but um, because our ferias are very popular yep. and a lot of people cluster together. Yep. And um, uh, so we have to be very careful when we announce that. So yep. we're hoping that in the year 2022, we can go back to having our ferias. Me too. Um, I, I leave the presidency of SAMAP in December, of this year, and Arcelia Hartley will become our new president and Ayasha Warren, our vice president. So we are gonna leave it up to them to see what activities they have. We know we had to cancel the feria. It won't be a feria, but they may, they may think of something else. For example, this past year, we had to cancel our canal anniversary celebration because that's a week-long celebration. Yes. And we have we have different things on diff seven different days. And um, Panama, but we that's decide. A celebration. I'm sorry. Panama loves the celebration. <laughs> well, I tell you, this year it it was an experiment for us, but we had everything virtually. Yeah. And it was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I did a documentary, and so I was very proud of the work that we did for that documentary. Yes. We brought to life one of the letters of the actual canal builders. Wow. And we dramatized it and had, we, it was like Harrigan Austin and his descendants. So we brought in family members who were descended from him and they talked about what it was, what he was like as a grandfather, father, etc. So did they put so that, that on that was, YouTube? We don't have it on YouTube, but we have it on uh, Facebook Live. Okay. Oh, I can, um, I can I send it to you. I want to get that or, link from you. Yes, I want to get that. Yeah, link. I'll send you the link. Okay. Uh, because that was that was one of the virtual activities that we had this past. Um, this past year. I've seen and, you um, times doing different things. So I know that you have been busy and and yeah. I really I really like how so many of us have just adapted to okay, this is what it is, but nevertheless, life can still go on in some measure. You know, exactly. we just have to cower in a corner and say, Oh well, woe is me. I think we have uh -huh. done, you know, as is it's it's odd to say 
but I think that the pandemic has opened up so many more options for us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Even my book club, I have a book club. It'll be turning three years this year. It's called the Black Girls Think and Grow Rich. Oh, and yeah, I got a book. I got, let me see if, wait, wait, just wait one minute. Okay, okay. <laughs> Their cup, but this one is Well Read Black Girl. Have you heard of this? Yes, it's on. I, I have seen that and it is on my vision board. I oh, have okay. a picture of that on my vision board. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. and, and, um, and so I, I really have to check it out further because when I was doing my vision board, you know, we do, we are Black Girls Think and Grow Rich. We do not read fiction. Um, we read inspiration, we read um, history. Right now, uh -huh. we're the Souls of Black Folk by W.E.B. Du Bois. Oh, and, wow. Um, but what I was saying, well, the only reason I brought uh, that shameless plug for my book, for my uh, Black Girl uh, book, book Club, but the reason I brought it up was because we would meet at this Black-owned coffee house in a oh. town near where I live. And, you know, my best friend in North Carolina has always been an avid reader. And I said, girl, I wish you could come to our meetings because, you know, we have such a great time talking, you know, sisters talking and everything. So now, uh -huh. since COVID, of course, we're not meeting in person. We meet by Zoom and it's uh -huh. opened it up. So now we have people reading books with us from California, Texas, Georgia, Carolinas, Virginia, Maryland, wow. Jersey, Philly, you know, and, and we've been able to actually embrace each other and, 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 and get together even more by yeah. technology. And we weren't thinking of it like this I, before the pandemic. Yeah, so that is wonderful. Great, That's wonderful. Great. It's been a great yeah. for us to um, reach each other. So I got to mm -hmm. get ready to go, but what I'm, what I'm looking forward to seeing you and bringing groups as soon as we are able. I, I pray that things will be much more opened up by May, you know, so that's our- I goal. hope so. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And if we come up, you know, you, you're a member, so you will get um, information from us if that's we're right. going to- um, if we're going to do anything special, okay. you know, um, the new president may decide to do something special, okay. something different. Well, we definitely want to, um, we definitely hope to be able, I mean, if you're doing something special for Etnia Negra, that's great, but we definitely want to be able to visit the museum, you know. Oh, and definitely. Well, with some app. So I'm is sure. There, mm -hmm. Is there a way for people, for us who uh, want to support the work of SMAP, is there, what is the best way for us to do that? Well, I tell you, you can um, do as you and Alfreda do, you know, you can become members and give an annual contribution. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who just say, they, well, we just want to make this one contribution. Mm -hmm. So you can do that too. You know, okay. you, you don't have to say become a member and be expected to contribute annually. You just want to give a one-time con uh, contribution, you can okay. do that. Is so there we way have to do that on the website. Um, we just renovated our website, and uh, we have been debating about you know getting the incorporating PayPal into our structure, okay. but we haven't done that yet. Okay. So right now, what the the the, the Innovation we made, and it's hardly any innovation. We got a private mailbox. Okay. And so, so for example, with with our elections, we um, uh, we we send out um, notifications to yes. all our members all over the world, yep. and we tell them that we now have a new mailbox, okay. and that has worked well because yes. our mail was getting lost. And uh, people were complaining. They were sending us checks and they would not get cash because oh, cool. once they steal the envelopes, then they can't use the check. So now our mail is tracked. 
from the time it leaves Miami, they send us an email and say your package number this is that's on the way. Cool. And that's right across the street from where I live. So so we've gotten a lot of good responses from our that's members great. overseas. And, and, and we did receive mail from you guys um, this oh, good. Mm -hmm. that's about, good. The, uh, yeah. about the election. And uh -huh. the yeah, that's so, going to be tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do, I didn't, I didn't really know anybody, you know, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, but yeah. I appreciate yeah. being included. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. 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 So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to share this with the group. Uh, uh -huh. It will be on, um, on YouTube. Um, and I thank you so much just for your insight, for your time, um, for your love of our people, you know, and for working so hard. I mean, 40 years, you know, committed. That's a long time, you know, <laughs> into building. And I'm so excited to bring people with me because I'm going to come personally every single time to bring Good for you. Good for you. this wonderful thing. So is there anything that you want, anything else you want to share with us before we close out? Well, no, I just want to say thanks to all you and to your listeners and to your, your followers. Um, and um, we are open to your suggestions to any way in which you can support us. We'd be very grateful and uh, we look forward to visiting with you when you come to Panama. Awesome. I miss you guys. And listen, you just about the prettiest 75 year old I ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> Yeah, you look good, mama. <laughs> so listen, thank you for spending thank the time you. with us, and I will see you soon. Um, to everyone, okay. this is Charlotte Van Horn, Black Expats in Panama. So happy to bring this interview to you. Follow us on the Facebook group. You can also um, subscribe uh, to our It's a Lots Forever YouTube channel to keep up with more videos like this and to stay connected to the wonderful Panama. Okay, thank you, Melva. I'll talk to you. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye now. Bye.